some scripture translations <clears throat> don't use the words blessed in the, in the Beatitudes, blessed are. They use happy, happy <coughs> are. In reading a book called Holy Humor, I found this thought on happiness from the Reverend John J. Walker of Post, Texas. He said, the place to be happy is here. The time to be happy is now. The way to be happy is to make others so. Perhaps this little quip from Reverend Walker will help us to get the gist of what's supposed to be happening with the Beatitudes as they were spoken and as we hear them and as we live them. We are to share them as we are to share the good news of the kingdom. And when we live these Beatitudes, we are living in the love and in the spirit of Jesus. And in that, we are happy and blessed. There's so much to unpack in these 12 little verses. It's really hard to know what to bring to your attention today. So I encourage everyone to read them when you get home. Read them in the message version. Read them in whatever version you like. Live with them for a while because they're just packed with wonderful things. And you will glean more from them as you read them again. And read them aloud because that's how they're meant to be heard. And join us on Tuesday night and we'll dig a little deeper into what they have to say. But there are two key concepts that I wanted to lift up for you this morning about the Sermon in the Mount and that are introduced to us in the Beatitudes. But you'll find them all the way through. So they're important for us to hear at the beginning. First is this whole concept of the kingdom of God. Every day when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray for the kingdom to come. The Bible, and specifically this Sermon on the Mount, are our GPS, the kingdom, because we won't find this kingdom on a map. The Bible is the way that we will find it, especially, especially in these Beatitudes. In Matthew 4.17, this is just a little bit before when Jesus just began his ministry, Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. All the other Gospels use the kingdom of God. And Matthew chose kingdom of heaven, but they are exactly the same thing, the same concept that they're talking about. Every word we read in the Sermon on the Mount of all three chapters should be read with the kingdom of God in our thoughts. And it should be assumed to belong to and bring about the kingdom of God. So that's the underlying theme of everything we're going to read from now until Lent is this kingdom of God. Jesus is up on this mountain, and he's sitting down to teach his students, just like any rabbi of that day would do. And the disciples in the crowd would listen attentively, hanging on to every word, you know, passing it back if somebody didn't hear it. You'd say, well, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, you know. And so it just grabbed people's attention so, that, so much that they could remember it and write it down. Here in our scripture, we read these words in verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, verses 4 through 9 don't have that look for this, theirs is the kingdom of heaven tag on it. But you should hear that at the end of each one of those verses, just like you would hear the refrain from a song. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And it wraps up, you know, verse 10 says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So it, it begins it and ends it, so that tells you everything in between is about this kingdom of heaven. It's important for us to hear that. That is all about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' presence on earth is bringing this kingdom of heaven to earth. As these people on the mountain listen, the kingdom of heaven is present right then, right now. As we listen to these words again, and as we live in them, and we study them, and we say them again tomorrow, we too are bringing the presence of the kingdom of heaven to this place and this time. The kingdom has many different levels, and it's, it's a very broad topic to think about. So we're going to do a couple different things here to talk about it. So this first is the kingdom is, has its foot in two worlds, so to speak. It's in the future, and it's in the now. So we have this future thing going on with the kingdom of heaven, and the now thing happening with the kingdom of heaven. God is not finished with this world. And we have to hear that God is present here today, just as God was at the creation and with Abraham and David and Ruth and Naomi and with Paul, and now with us. God is still here. God is powerful and still in control and still creating and moving us toward this kingdom of God. So it's a little bit in the future, but it's still now. 
And so these words that we hear are not just in the Beatitudes, but in the whole sermon have to do with this kingdom of God. And Jesus is always practical, and he always has an immediate message as well. So when he says these things, um, that, you know, blessed of more, and it kind of sounds like, you know, don't worry, in the future there will be no tears. It definitely means that, because it is future-oriented, but it's also about the now. It happens today. So that's important for us to remember as we hear and read these words. They're about now and tomorrow. Now, these Beatitudes are practical advice for successful living. So, if we're, again, we're looking at these from different levels. And these words help us to remember that we are standing in two worlds. The world of humanity God. The Beatitudes, again, are that GPS. They're, here's the fork in the road. We go this way. We're people of the world living in the world the way the world does it. If we go the Beatitude way, we take the right fork, left fork, whatever fork it is, we're going to be living in the world, but doing it as God's people in God's way. And so that's an important thing for us to hear again as we're listening to this Beatitude. It's in both places. And it's giving us a way, when we hear these Beatitudes, for us to be in the world and not of the world, for us to be in the world and witnessing to the rest of the world about this God that we have come to know. When we hear these words, we remember that we are blessed by God. And that calls us to, to action, to be the people outlined in each verse, and to help Jesus bring about that kingdom of God. And it's important for us to note that today's modern day meaning of happy is not quite the same as it was in Jesus' day, and it doesn't quite get to the meaning of the blessed of. That second concept we want to talk about is what is blessedness? What does that word mean to be blessed? Well, happy is kind of a second class definition of the word blessed. Blessed is really deeper than happy. It, it should be happy with a dollop of joy and enthusiasm and divine providence in it. It's, it's, it can also mean fortunate. In a religious sense, it means those who are saved, those who find peace and well-being. Everything is going to be okay. So all of that is wrapped up in this word, blessed. So you may remember our dog, Buddy, who came from a rescue dog group. And he's obviously been abused. Uh, when we first got him, there were loads of things that scared him to death. Literally made him shake so much that he couldn't move. And now I can get him past those really scary things, the idling car or the person with the rake or the person with the hose. If I say to him as we walk by, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, buddy. I swear my neighbors think I'm crazy because that's about all I say. It's okay, buddy, it's okay, buddy, it's okay, buddy. It's okay, buddy. And now, you know, we've had him for five years. He kind of feels comfortable with us. He feels, you know, a little bit of healing has taken place. I can get him by the idling car at the end of my arm, which is at the end, and he's at the end of his leash, and we go by, and I say, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And he will get by that scary thing now. Having me there, having me say that mantra has kind of helped him to find a calmer place to be. And he knows that I won't let that scary thing hurt him. Um, when we hear those words, blessed are those who, it's like, that God being the mommy to the buddy. Um, when we are doing that scary thing or in that scary thing of grieving or unfairness or mean, unjust people or politics or anger, they're not going away. The idling car did not go away. It was still there. But God is with you. And God is saying, I'm with you. It's going to be okay. The kingdom of God is here. We are creating the kingdom of God as we speak, and it will be that it is all resolved in the future. That's what blessed are they is talking about when we are blessed. It's that it's going to be okay. God is here. God is with you. Kind of okay. And perhaps we can better grasp this concept of blessed if we really realize that the opposite of blessed is not unhappy. The opposite of blessed is cursed. So. Jesus is always turning the world upside down. From the very beginning, he has chosen mere fishermen to be his disciples instead of the learned and the rich and the sanctified. In Jesus' day, those are the people who should have been called, the learned, the rich, and the sanctified. That is turning the world upside down. 
So these beatitudes that Jesus shared also turn the world upside down. Again, it's not the learned, and it's not the rich, and it's not the sanctified. Those who the world saw was blessed, who are going to be blessed by God. They have already received their blessing. They're living in their blessing with their money or their brains or whatever it is. God blesses whom he will, and not whom the world will choose. Those who will receive blessing in the coming kingdom are those who are outlined in the Beatitudes, those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for, for justice or righteousness, um, the, those who are, are seeking mercy and giving mercy, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and those who are persecuted for Jesus' sake. Those are the ones who will be blessed. In Robert Shin's book on the Sermon on the Mount, he says, Each beatitude of Jesus tells how the kingdom of God reverses the obvious situation. Again, it's the upside down, the reversal of things that Jesus is doing when he comes to earth. It challenges us to readjust our thinking just as it did the people of Jesus' day. And that's why it's so important to read each beatitude and figure out what's going on in there from Jesus' time and our time, because then you really see what the reversal is. These folks know, those people sitting at the base of the mountain surrounding Jesus, they knew what it was like to be unblessed. They knew what it was like to be cursed by the people of their culture and looked down upon and not needed and not wanted and you know, to be extra baggage. And they know how glorious it is to be told that they are blessed and that God sees them as blessed. And so they are filled with that good news, and they share that blessing, the mercy, the hope, the love, the grief, and in so doing, they bless those who thought they were blessed, and the blessing and the kingdom grow. So as we leave, what are our questions today? What if every one of us made a concerted effort to become the poor in spirit, to become the meek, to become the ones who showed mercy? What would the world be like if we were pure in heart and peacemakers? How would our community be transformed? How would these Beatitudes bring people together? If everybody was together at the base of the mountain. That's important, the community of faith. So again, I invite you to study these words this week. Think about the questions that are in your sermon notes. So you can take them home and read it again and then ask yourself these questions when you have more time to think about them. But in the meantime, we can realize the place to be blessed is here. The time to be blessed is now. The way to be blessed is to follow God and to help others be blessed. And God's kingdom will come.